Welcome back to KR Runs. This is the first in a series of videos. I want to talk through the running tools that I use to monitor my run training. So the first in the series is Garmin Connect. Um, Garmin Connect is what I would call my central hub in terms of the run apps I use in that I use a Garmin 645 music watch. Um, to track all of my runs. I've had this watch for a couple of years now and to be honest it's the best watch I've had. Um, I've had a few Garmin watches going back to the Garmin 610, um, the Garmin 630 and I must say the Garmin 645 Music is the best watch I've had um, and consequently I'm not really looking around for another watch at the moment. So Overall, I'd say the Garmin Connect app is a really good app. However, I don't really use it that much other than, as I said, it's the central hub. So I track all my runs on the watch. All of the activities are loaded into the app through the activity section. So if we look at running, um, you can see yesterday I did a 21 kilometer long run. Um, so all of my runs come through this app and from this app they are fed to the likes of Strava training peaks and I've also just bought a stride power meter um, so those are um, apps that I use more for analysis uh, what I use the Garmin Connect app for predominantly is the means by which I communicate to my coach so every time I upload an activity I'll go into that activity and I'll edit the activity. Um, so in that activity, I'll put, I'll put a name in that being a bit rushed there. So 21 kilometer long run. And in the notes, I put anything noteworthy that happened during the run. So you can see on this particular long run yesterday on the 3rd of January, there'd been torrential rain overnight. Um, so my coach's plan was to complete the run on grass. However, I was unable to do that. Um, and I also felt it noteworthy. You know, I, I had to wear an old pair of trainers to complete the run on grass. However, I had to ditch that. Consequently, I was running on concrete in an old pair of trainers. So I slightly reduced the intensity of the long run overall. So I, I put notes there. So my coach can pick all of those up and contact me if he needs to with any comments or questions. I also put in my aura stats, but again, I'm going to cover that in a different video. I, I, I use an aura ring to track readiness and um, sleep statistics and HRV, heart rate variability and rest in HR and those sorts of things. So I let my coach know how things are going from a rest and recovery point of view. I also try and put in how I was feeling and the perceived effort for the run. So that's what I do for every single activity. Um, and that's predominantly what I use the app for. I mean, overall, I'd say the Garmin Connect app is a very powerful app, but there's some things it just simply misses the point on, I would say. Um, I think Garmin is losing a bit of ground when it comes to logging information against a run, for example, it doesn't let you do things like, well, did I run on grass? Did I run on road? Um, it would be nice to be able to sort of categorize a little bit more exactly what these runs were, were they long runs, recovery runs? Um, comment down below, but to me, this app is just missing some easy wins um, in terms of how you would go about categorizing the activity. Um, so other than, as I say, communicating with my coach, Garmin Connect, the only other um, sort of elements of this app that I like to look at are in the health stats. Um, so I like to look at heart rate. I don't look at this very much, but I like to just look at the seven day and four week trends. So obviously this 
reads through the um, wrist sensor. So I do take the information a little bit with a pinch of salt or, or a little bit of caution. But I like to look at the seven day resting heart rate. So you can see there it's fairly stable. The blue line on the graph and it's currently at 47 beats per minute um, on the seven day. Now I just like to compare it to the four week. Again, that blue line is fairly stable at 47. So what I'm looking for there I'm looking to see the four week trend versus the seven day. And I'm particularly looking to see if the seven days um, um, significantly higher or lower. So let's say on the seven day I was running at 50 and above. I would be concerned with that. On the other hand, if, if the seven day was more like 45 versus the 47, that's a good sign that my fitness is increasing, um, my heart rate reserve is it is increasing because effectively my rest and heart rate is lowering um, due to increased fitness increased blood flow um, but at the moment i'm fairly comfortable that the seven day and four week averages are in line with each other so i'll keep an eye on that it's not something i'll look at very regularly but every now and again i'll just look at that the other health stat i like to look at every now and again is stress. So again, I'll just look at the seven day average 21 versus the four week 24. So that's good. Um, I've been in a few weeks of heavy training the last three weeks. As I speak today, this is an easy week, but it's good to see that the stress score is coming down. Um, and I'll monitor that as I go through this easy week. I don't want to see that stress increasing however i am going back to work this week so um that could impact the stress and it'll be interesting to see how that goes other than that i like to look at performance stats vo2 max reading so this basically looks at um your performance on runs i don't know exactly how it calculates but you can see at the moment my vo2 max is 63 what I believe goes on here is it's looking at your max heart rate data and then it's looking at your heart rate data during different runs and looking at the average heart rates, the average pacing and tries to sort of um, estimate your VO2 max. So what I like to look at here again, I just like to look at the four week trend. For me, it's fairly flat and what I tend to notice is that when I'm doing harder workouts, my VO2 max will improve. And when I'm doing easier runs, um, my VO2 max will go down. But again, I would comment here that the app is failing in that it isn't able to understand if I go and do an easier recovery run on the grass, of course, the heart rate is going to be similar um, to an easy run on the road, but my pace is going to be greatly reduced because of the the effort required to run on grass versus road. So the Garmin Connect app simply can't um, cope with um, variability, things like wind, things like running up hills. It can really punish you for doing a recovery run on the grass and it can really reward you for doing like a really sharp, intense session on the road in good conditions. So you have to take it with a little bit of a cautionary note it's really important to have your max heart rate information um, as up to date and correct as possible. But overall, I'm seeing here that my 12 week um, VO2 max rating is going in the right direction. I'm currently operating around the 62 to 64 level, which predicts my 5k time anywhere from low 16s to sort of 16 and a half minutes. Um, whether I can go out and do that sort of performances remains to be seen. Um, there's no races around at the moment, but um, I'm certainly interested to see what I'm capable of. And I may complete some time trials to try and validate this data. Um, I mean, as I say, the, the Garmin Connect app is extremely powerful um, because it's pretty much got everything I need within the app itself. I tend not to go on the desktop version. Um, and 
the last time I did log into the desktop version of the app, I wasn't keen on sort of the tile. It had this kind of Windows tile-esque feel to it, which I wasn't keen on. Um, and as I say, although this is the central hub for my activities, I don't use it any other than what I've just described. So I hope that's been useful. Um, do you use Garmin Connect? If so, let me know in the comments down below.